Hello and welcome, Pastor John here. I want to welcome you again to our Going Through the Bible series. And today we are going to look at the prophets in the Bible. Uh, we've just finished our segment on wisdom literature, right? We started in the book of Job and we ended in the uh, Song of Songs or Song of Solomon. And now we're turning to the, um, to the prophets. Um, that's the last segment in the Old Testament. So here we have four um, major prophets, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. And the 12 minor ones uh, from Hosea to Malachi. So um, the four major prophets, um, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel, um, are called major because... Um, well, basically, there's more, uh, more text, right? There's more, um, um, more material, and the the other ones, uh, the, the minor twelve minor ones are a little bit shorter, often very short. That doesn't mean they're um, less significant. They're all significant, and just to note, Jeremiah also wrote the book of uh, Lamentations. So in the Old Testament, Isaiah, there's the book of Isaiah. We'll be looking at a passage today, book of Jeremiah, uh, followed by the book of Lamentations, also written by Jeremiah, then the book of Ezekiel, and the book of Daniel. Then uh, the, the minor prophets begin Hosea to Malachi. So there's a lot going on in there, and I encourage you not to um, uh, dismiss them, um, and but read them. There's so much in there, and there's a lot of um, messianic prophecies uh, here and there, spread throughout all of them. Not in every book, but in, in, in many of them. Uh, talking about our Lord Jesus Christ and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ <clears throat> and more. So you just don't want to miss that. All right, so today we're going to be looking at the prophet Isaiah. And uh, so please open your Bibles. Uh, go to Isaiah chapter 6, uh, verses 1 to 8. So please open your Bibles. Open the uh, open your Bible. Turn to Isaiah chapter six, verses one to eight. All right, Isaiah chapter six, verses one to eight. And here we read. It was in the year King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Attending him were mighty seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. They were calling out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Their voices shook the temple to its foundations, and the entire building was filled with smoke. Then I said, It's all over. I am doomed, for I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips, and I live among a people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the King, the Lord of heaven's armies. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with the burning coal he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongues. He touched my lips with it and said, See, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed, and your sins are forgiven. Then I heard the Lord asking, Who should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? I said, Here I am. Send me. God bless for you his word. Here I am. Send me. That's the title for today's message here. Here I am. Here I am. Send me. So here uh, we see um, the commissioning um, of the prophet Isaiah. And um, the background here is that um, Isaiah reveals to us here uh, God's sovereignty and his, also his redeeming love. So uh, this applies to both his chosen people, that's the Israelites, right? And they're on their journey from judgment to salvation. And for us with uh, Jesus Christ coming um, as our Messiah for both Jew and Gentile 
and Jesus has come, right? So um, that is the um, the uh, journey from uh, judgment to salvation, salvation through Jesus Christ. And what's happening here is that uh, God is getting um, Zia ready to uh, be the uh, commissioning him to be the spokesman, the spokesperson for the Hebrew people, the Israelite people at the time. What's happening is, unfortunately, the uh, Israelites are turning to, or have turned to pagan gods and engaging <coughs> in idolatry. In other words, they, um, they've turned away from God and God condemns and judges the Israelites' idolatry. And that's what's going on here. Why does God judge? Well, because of his holiness. It's one of his attributes um, God God is holy and that is basically our topic here so uh, for us as, as um, sinful human beings what does it mean for our relationship to an all holy God um, how can we as sinful beings have a relationship and and what does that mean for our calling as we're called as Christians as believers for example to share the good news right so in these verses, uh, these are really just uh, amazing verses, um, and I encourage you to read um, read the entire book of Isaiah if you can, um, so uh, for encouragement. And uh, here in verses 1 to 4, we see God's absolute holiness, right? The seraphim, those are angelic beings, right? Not demons, fallen angels, like Satan, right? The king of, you know, the demons. Um, but uh, angels were in their proper abode. They are God's uh, spokespeople. They serve God. And here the seraphim um, pronounce God's absolute holiness. Holy, holy, holy. So in verse 5, Isaiah recognizes this. He sees God's holiness and confesses and admits that he is a sinner. So what happens in verses um, 6 to 7 is that God intercedes on behalf of a repentant heart here. That's Isaiah's repentant heart. And so he sends one of the seraphim to touch Isaiah's um, mouth here, lips with the coal. And it's just so amazing um, how God cleanses him. He acknowledges um, Isaiah's um, um, uh, understanding that he's standing before a holy God and he sees Isaiah's repentant heart. And so in verse 7, it then says, your sins are forgiven. So only God can forgive sins. And we see this, uh, Jesus does this over and over in the Gospels. I'll just give you two examples. Um, in chapter 7 of the Gospel of Luke, that's Luke 7, verse 48. It says, then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. And Matthew chapter 9 verse 2. Some people brought to him a paralyzed man on a mat. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, Be encouraged, my child, your sins are forgiven. So, what does it mean then, uh, being called by God? What does it mean for you to be called by God? What does it mean for you? It means that God is willing to remove our guilt and forgive our sins. sins, And that's very important. God is willing to remove our guilt and forgive our sins. And in Psalm 103, 11 to 12, we can read more about this. It says, For his unfailing love toward those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far from us as the east is from the West. God bless the reading of his word. God removes our sins. Why does he do that? Well, one of the main reasons is so that we can have, we can live and have a personal relationship with him. We read in Psalm 103, 13 to 14. The Lord is like a father to his children, tender and compassionate to those who fear him. For he knows how weak we are. He remembers we are only dust. God bless me of his word. So we see God here as our loving Heavenly Father. So we come to him with repentant hearts 
And this is important so we can serve God wholeheartedly as his ambassadors without guilt and shame, right? So the Apostle Paul writes on this to serving uh, about serving God wholeheartedly without guilt and shame in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead. Come back to God. God bless the reading of his word. So, um, as we see in Isaiah's commissioning, um, sharing uh, God's uh, word and the good news of Christ, uh, that Jesus came as God in the flesh to atone for our sins on the cross, to die for our sins so we may have eternal life in and through him, um, is basically um, just like similar, not identical, but similar to Isaiah's calling. And the Bible also helps us here. So may, maybe you feel you know, up to it, or um, maybe you want really you want to serve and you desire to serve God, but you just maybe something's holding you back. Uh, some some people may say, "Oh, I'm too sinful," or "I I don't know what to do." Well, the Bible helps us here. So here comes as here's a verse I encourage you to highlight. It's a big one, so great verse. Um, it's in the first letter of John, that's 1 John, chapter 1, verses 8 to 9. 1 John, chapter 1, verses 8 to 9 reads, If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. God bless the reading of this word. I'll read it one more time. First letter of John, 1 John, chapter 1, verses 8 to 9. Highlight this one. If we claim we have no sin, we are only fooling ourselves and not living in the truth. But if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. God bless the reading of this word. So we can always claim this truth when we um, confess our sins to him, that is to our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, that's the most important thing. Um, Jesus is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Being cleansed from all wickedness is our, the lifelong process of, um, we call it sanctification, um, becoming more holy in our being. And so... Um, if you're dealing with um, different forms of sin or whatever they may be, and um, Jesus already knows that. So understand that he is faithful and just. So remind yourself of this word. The most important thing is no matter what sin you're dealing with, or something that may be from your childhood or way back, or any form of sin, is to go back, um, highlight this verse, Go over and over and over and turn to Jesus and, and tell him, this is what happened or this is what I did or this was what done, was done to me or whatever it may be. The key is to come back to Jesus again and again and again, not as a, as a ritual, but to then understand, to see that he um, has a perfect plan and purpose and timing for you and understand that he initiates he begins your journey of faith with him right we all sometimes think of faith um, being uh, something we do but it's basically understanding just like isaiah did our sinfulness before an all holy god and god himself calls and commissions us and cleanses us right that's so very important and so turn back to jesus over and over and over again Stay in God's Word, the Bible, every day, as much as you can, and spend time with Jesus and see what He will do in your life. Maybe very different from person to person, but the key is to come back, go back to Jesus. Somebody may, oh, I sinned again, or I sinned again. Not that somebody's uh, saying, uh, oh, I'm safe, now I'm just going on to live in sin. No, no, no. Somebody with a repentant heart who's struggling with sin. That may be you or anybody else or somebody you know but um, keep on praying and confessing to Jesus and Jesus only and see what he does all right 
So may that be an encouragement to you. And um, I hope this uh, message um, um, blessed you. May God bless you and keep you.